Hey everyone, happy Valentine's Day. I hope you had a great day. I myself spent the evening cooking dinner for one, then doing the dishes. I finished off a bucket of cheese balls, and then I watched The Gilded Age on HBO. And after all that was over, I still had a few hours left before I knew I'd be staring up at the ceiling, trying to find sleep. So I figured I'd read you my new story that I released today called St. Valentine. Appropriate. This is a story I actually wrote um, on Friday night, three days before Valentine's Day. Um, I had had an experience similar to what's written that all kind of came together. I don't usually write a holiday story, although every holiday I feel like I should release one. This past Christmas I almost released a Christmas carol. Um, but you can't release something that you don't actually sit down and write. This time I actually sit, sat down and wrote. So, um, some people like to go to the website and read them. I figure if I'm releasing it for free, I can read them myself. Some people like watching these things instead. So anyway, this is my new story, Saint Valentine. And remember, this is based on me, but it's not necessarily me. Do you know what I mean? St. Valentine. How has it come to this? These are the words I think as I stand in the checkout line, carriage full of toilet paper and preheated chicken wings from the a la carte counter, staring at a display of six gallon buckets of cheese balls. How cruel can fate be? putting Super Bowl Sunday and Valentine's Day back to back like that, forcing the stores to place temptation right in the path of all the lonely souls wandering the aisles hungry for both snacks and affection. The pregnant mother in front of me finishes loading the contents of her cart onto the cashier's conveyor belt and scoots forward, and I move in kind. Three more steps closer to my orange demise. They have to know, right? The shelf stalkers, I mean. They realize who will be buying these things, and it won't be the happy people getting together with all their friends to watch commercials for three hours. No. Those tubs are for the huddled masses of millennial Eleanor Rigby's like me, picking up the rice in a church where our friends' weddings have been. The pregnant woman in front of me catches a dozen eggs as they fall off the moving counter. The first break in eye contact I've had with the barrel of sins in nearly a minute. I'm sweating as I slowly creep closer to my inevitable damnation. And, like a morally superior order from any website other than Amazon, the moment arrives at long last. The pregnant woman slams down the plastic divider, signifying there's plenty of room for me to start piling my toilet paper and chicken wings behind her noticeably more adult hall. I begin the classic supermarket flip move, walking from the handles of my cart to the nose of it for optimum, optimum unloading efficiency, but with a slight variation. As I make it to the mid-cart part of the journey, I swing an arm out and, in one fluid motion, palm one of the buckets of balls right onto the counter. I lean against the front of the cart for a moment, broken and defeated, not ready to face the cashier. That'll be 105.69. Debit, said the pregnant woman. Jesus Monte Cristo, I think to myself, head whipping over my shoulder. Must be nice. I barely get my white wipes up before the wealthy pregnant woman rolled away and the cashier tucked into my embarrassment of riches. How are you today? She asked with the kind of grin only years of customer service could mold. I didn't answer verbally. I just looked down at the bucket, then back at her. I watched as her eyes followed the same path mine had taken, as the practiced smile melted from her face. But she was a professional. Big party this weekend, huh? Mother Teresa herself could not have delivered the line with more mercy than my sweet cashier had. I shook my head. She smiled, but not like before. Will that be credit or debit? Credit, please. 
Hey, man, I can't fit all this toilet paper into this one reusable bag, said the pubescent bag boy. Is it all right if I stuff some of this in with the chicken? There's a lot going on in that story. It's flash fiction, pretty good. I enjoy it. My favorite line is the Eleanor Rigby line. And honest to God, if that wasn't in there, this probably would have just sat in my file folders for another year before I could figure out if it was worth anything. But that one line, when you find something like that, you just gotta share it immediately. You know what I mean? Anyway, I truly hope that you had a great Valentine's Day, if you celebrate. And if you don't, I hope you had a great day in general. Thanks for watching, thanks for reading, and if you want to check out any of my other stuff, you can go to joshpeatfield.com. Have a good night.